Hello everyone, my name is Alexei Narayanapa, a PhD student from the University of Montreal, also affiliated with the Heart Institute of Montreal. My work is titled Predicting Genetic Ancestry Using Fellow DCG, Underlying the Potential Danger for Fairness. I work on the electrocardiogram, which through the addition of electrodes on the chest of an individual, we can monitor the depolarization of the myocardium or the heart muscle. And through the waveform generated by each lead, we can then compare it to normal waveforms and then assess if there's any underlying disease in a non-invasive manner. However, throughout the year, we've also been able to determine that the ECG also yields more information about the individual itself. For example, here from reviewed by Carbon and Al, it's highly stylized, but we see that there's differences between biological males and females. Well, males will have a higher amplitude, while females have a smaller amplitude and faster heart rate. These differences can be leveraged using deep neural networks. Here on the panel on the left, work by Akhet Al, simple convolution neural network on the far left trying to predict sex. Here with an area under the curve of 0 0.97, so almost perfect performances. And here in the center, we're trying to predict the age of the individual that can be done according to them, a plus minus eight years. This, in a follow-up study, can also be done apparently for ethnicity by Noseworthy and all, trying to predict the self-declared ethnicities between non-Hispanic, Black, slash African American versus others, with an accuracy of roughly 56.2%. This is interesting because although sex and age is easy, it seems, still seems to be some signal for ethnicity itself. Thus raising the question, could that actually be the case also for ECGs? Why is this important? Well, for example, by Peter de Calatavi, here I'm trying to predict a lung nodule for lung tumors in X-ray images can perform differently depending on the type of patient that's being visualized. For example, here on the test net, verified by different characteristics, we see that the different cost causal rates between females and males, between different age groups, and between different ethnicities. So I'm stating that it is important to know what can be learned implicitly by the network because enhanced biases in the data can be amplified by the network itself, yielding those very performances. Thus, to actually assess this ancestry, which is a more specific definition, of course, of ethnicity, a genetic definition, we wanted to look at the cell population here at the Heart Institute of Montreal, where we have roughly 16,000 patients, all genotypes, and there are associated ECGs. We have more ECGs because there are multiple ECGs in front of them because we want to diagnose it and all follow up. After the merging, we have roughly 14,000 patients with the left most distribution of ancestry, all these things, all that ancestry distribution was required, yielding roughly a quarter of a million ECGs. And then making sure, of course, there was no data leakage and there was the satisfied splitting, reframing a convolution neural network on that data. On the right, we see the distribution of our patient projected on the 1,000 genome data set. The 1,000 genome data set represent roughly 2,500 2, patients or individuals sorry, from around the world, and we have their super and sub population. And we see that when we protect the data, our data here is in the black process. We have some East Asians, some Africans. We have some American and South Asian here in green and red, and a lot of Europeans. And why is because in Montreal, we have a lot of British, Irish, and French descent. To infer ancestry of these RFMs, the 2013 paper, which is still today uh, widely used, which bins the genome in small regions, and for each of those bins, it uh, predicts using a random forest, taking in the SNP and predicting the ancestry, allowing us to generate the map like here on the right of mostly African individual with some small regions of European and even native. We then average those bins together to obtain a general ancestry for the individual. To make sure that we leverage the inbound data correctly, we decided to change the network using focal loss from the lens paper in 2017, which increases the gradient to vary for harder to learn examples. Here are the non-European examples, allowing us to learn a more well-distributed um, and more balanced network. It also helps regularize the output as well. On the right, I said a uh, uh, stylized um, image of the stratified convolution or group convolutions, which is partly described by Shalit Al on the second paper in 2017, allowing us to keep the information in the lead or within me, and not merge information like a normal convolution would do, for us demonstrating a better performance, at least for our type of data. At the end, we've obtained an interesting result is the balance accuracy. So 
The reason why not using normal accuracy is normal accuracy because the high number of European is close to 100%. It's a more representative metric uh, of 62.5%. And compared to the grand random distribution of 34.2%, the reason why that's higher than complete random is because we have so many Europeans that shuffling and use of focal loss as well uh, allows us to have a, a slightly higher random uh, distribution, which is more representative, I think, for our comparison. And this shows that there's some signal, not a, not a tremendous amount. And understandably, we have some of these degenerative diseases and some sort of confounding factors, but so there's an interesting amount of signal and should represent a potential idea for certification and further analysis of disease predicting networks as ancestry could be implicitly learned and used as a uh, provided sample application by a certain network. So in conclusion, ancestry-specific information can be leveraged by published neural networks implicitly using public ECG, and that bias should be investigated when uh, making ECG-based algorithms. And future work to uh, uh, quantify this potential impact, and that's what exactly we've been doing. So we've uh, currently trying to relabel all these using QBOS and identify loci. So loci are genes that on the GWAS do affect these genes. Also validate this on more quote unquote healthy CGs. So the million that in program in the US or the UK Biobank, which contain roughly 70,000 patients with 12 DCGs. On the computational side, we want to leverage better, uh, better algorithms, mostly transformers to improve those performances and also validate if that bias actually exists on multiple types of published network uh, that try to predict disease and see if the disease prediction is stratified by populated by ancestry. I want to thank all my team, my PI Rabat and my Judy Ustain, and all my colleagues that have been helping me with that project. Thank you so much.